you want to see how to take a weird idea, some 3D printed parts, and turn it into this, then stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Tim. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I am an author and I typically have either things going on with writing, my thoughts on writing in general, or fun projects I'm working on. So I'm going to Fan Expo Boston this um, the weekend for the first time as a vendor and uh, I couldn't pass up the chance to have uh, photos with um, four of the most special people from one of my favorite movies, The Lord of the Rings. So for like the first time I've at least seen them at a con, uh, you know, Elijah Wood, Dominic Monaghan, Billy Boyd, and Sean Astin are all going to be together. Um, so of course I had to pay for the photo op to get all four. So I had to think of something fun to do. Um, it's this coming Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, it's Sunday night as the time of this recording, so I'm kind of bringing it down to the wire. Um, but I was afraid that they would have the Lexan partition still up so that you can't get close due to COVID restrictions. So I'm kind of going into this assuming that I'm not going to be able to like be there next to them for a photo. So of course, what's the, the thing that, you know, ties basically them together? You know, a ring. And as you can tell from just looking at it through the video here, you know, the ring is really tiny. What can you do with it that's exciting? Um, so I was like, well, if I'm going to be behind that partition, maybe it'd be fun to have a picture of me holding, like, the one ring and they're on the other side of the Lexan, like, trying to get it. So I need a bigger one. So I found a good model for it on Thingiverse. Um, and I had this. This was a bracelet option uh, for the size scaling. And I was like, well, you know, it looks cool but it's still tiny. So I scaled it up to the biggest that, you know, the, the printer I'm running right now, uh, my Prusa Mini would handle. So now I got the big one, my head for scale. Um, and I was like, well, that's cool. You know, I can play with it, put it around my wrist, but it's still not big enough. So I maxed out um, each basically four quadrants and I made <laughs> four pieces to come around this big. And I was like, well, if I'm gonna break it into four so that I could print it uh, at basically the max size, um, I should do something fun with it. And I was thinking, I was like, there's the four hobbits. Um, I got four sections. What if I make it like the friendship of the ring? So I am putting uh, basically magnets into each section and I'm going to put alignment pins on it so it stays together and um, then basically the goal was to give it to them and hopefully they want it. <laughs> um, they theoretically could each take a section of it. I know it's super cheesy, just bear with me. Um, so let's go down to the workbench. We'll take a look uh, at what we're gonna do next and we'll go from there. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna clean up uh, the rest of the parts. As you can see, here's one with the support structure gone, but I have to get rid of a little bit of the bottom here and then sand it smooth. Uh, here's what it looks like when I printed it straight down on the bed. I did support just to kind of fill in the extra around the lettering and to give a decent structure going up here when it started doing the curve. Uh, I printed a test without it. I wasn't a really big fan. So between my fingers, uh, wire cutters, and then a nice little smooth sanding block, I can make this look nice and good. Uh, so let's take one of the ones that we already did. And what I wanted to do was I was going to model in uh, basically bosses and um, basically counterbores uh, to do like a male-female airlock system so that I could uh, magnet them together. But the STL that I got for this, it, well, it looks great. You know, you can see the lettering in there really nicely. Um, the scaling kept getting messed up when I tried to throw it in the SolidWorks. So I wasn't really trusting how it was going to look and how it was going to interact with the different magnets that I wanted to use. So what I did instead was I decided to just drill it and I made a series of plugs. Um, the ones with the big hole is for the magnet and the one with the little boss, I got these nice little ring magnets that I'm gonna screw into there. And then this will also provide me uh, my airlock system so that they can mesh in together nicely. Because originally I was just gonna do a steel plate into the side of it. But if I had magnets on there, it could still wobble up and down. By doing this, each section has two points of contact with the other half. So each individual part will have four points of contact to the rest of the system. This should make it pretty strong while still allowing um, it to go together and, but then come apart easily enough. So uh, basically, you know, each one of these is gonna have 
uh, two of these guys on one end, and then these little ring magnets down the other side. So to make it more consistent for myself, what I did was I designed and printed a little uh, drill jig so that it mates in with the end. So this way, now I can go in and basically treat these as drill bushings. Um, you know, I was worried that I might chew it up too much. I'm just gonna use, you know, my basic Ryobi hand drill. Uh, Cause you know, I could do it in a drill press, but then I have to literally make like a nest to like hold this. And it just seems like a lot of work to just do for four parts. So I'm literally just gonna hold this, drill through. Um, I'll put some like masking tape on there so I don't drill too deep. And then what I'll do is one end, we'll get these and the other end, we'll get these. So let's dive in. All right, so quick update since I uh, showed you last. I kind of debated how I was going to hang this, and then I ended up having these hooks that were left over. And because I only did 15% uh, infill, it's nice and meshy enough inside that I was able to easily drive this right through. So this is uh, pretty convenient, uh, giving me a, a nice way to hold it without touching any of the painted surfaces. Um, I ended up going with uh, just some Krylon white. I was going to do red. Um, because I wanted to see if it would pull out the gold a little bit more, but I thought I'd go with the white. And sure enough, it ended up being kind of uh, at the end of the bottle, a little sparse, uh, but it's still gonna be good enough. So we'll do a light sand, and then I'm going to paint it with um, the stuff I got at Michael's. I figured this is gonna be a nice gold color, and the plan is to do gold for the ring itself, and then I'm gonna fill the inside in with red, uh, just kind of nice, like glowy, uh, maybe I'll do like a darker red and then a lighter red on top of it to give it kind of a glow effect. Um, what I also went ahead and did is I got all my magnets, uh, glued them down to the bottom of the plugs here, and then made sure all the poles lined up correctly, and then I'll press these in and glue them in place after. So I'll have the female side in here, the male side in here, and then everything can connect uh, nicely. So um, yeah, let's dive into painting, and um, we'll take it from there. All right, so after painting and doing sanding, I uh, have three coats of the gold down. Um, again, this is the uh, Decor Art Metallics. I'll put the information down in the description. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to make the, the lettering glow a little bit. So I've decided to go with uh, some of this Blood Angels Red that I have uh, from doing Warhammer figures. And I'm going to basically trace in and uh, just put a little red in there just to kind of make it look like the... Uh, the script glowing, you know, when it uh, goes near the fire. So let's uh, let's dive in. So that looks really good. I like that. Uh, you know, it's just kind of subtle. I don't want it to be too overbearing. Uh, I'm kind of worried it looks a little like blood, but I don't know. I like it. I think it's going to be good.
Okay, so let's take a break. Uh, full disclosure, I'm doing this the last day before I go to Fan Expo. So um, I ended up kind of rushing a few things and didn't film everything I was doing. So since I showed you last, um, I finished all the red lettering in the script and I put a clear coat over it. Um, I signed each section and I went ahead and glued in the um, female halves of the plugs on all four sections. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is put in the male parts, um, make sure I get them to the right height, glue them in place, and then I'll leave everything together uh, so that it kind of seals in um, at the right height. I'll let that sit together to make sure everything sets correctly on this half, and then it will basically be done. All right, so let's dive in uh, with the rest of it, and we'll get going. All right, so it's finally done. Um, it took the better part of a week and was kind of dumb to do in the short time period I had, but I thought of it with only a few days to go until Fan Expo when I was meeting the four actors who played the Hobbits anyway, so I didn't really have too much of a choice. Um, like I said, I did uh, two smaller ones before, settled on this one, and as you saw in the process I went through, I did three coats of gold, uh, one coat of red contrast in the script, uh, seal coated, did the female and male magnet interlocks on each side. Uh, so you can see uh, all four pieces are together. So we now have the friendship of the ring. Um, so I'm going to go pack up now because it's literally time to drive to Boston. Um, and on Saturday, I'm going to get to meet uh, Billy Dominic, uh, Sean, and Elijah. So uh, the goal is to do my photo op with them uh, with the giant ring. Like I said, I brought this in case they make a stay behind Lexan. And I thought it'd be something kind of fun to like hold and do, be, uh, you know, with the Lexan between us. And if we can actually get close, then all the better. Um, and regardless, when we're done, I'm going to give each one of them a four, uh, fourth of it. And they can take it and keep it if they like. And uh, hopefully they like it. So, um, yeah, let's go pack and uh, we'll follow up and see how it goes. Hey, everybody. So... I'm back from uh, Fan Expo. Um, I just got home a couple hours ago. I'm exhausted. Um, but as you can see, no one ring in my hand anymore. Um, it went about as good as I could expect. I uh, you know, waited in line forever. I have never paid for a photo op, so I didn't really know how the process was going to go. Waited for like half an hour to finally get in, and they shuffled us through. It was like a meat market in there. And next thing I know, you're just basically thrust into the booth. They're all there with their handlers, there's a bunch of cameramen, and they're kind of just shuffling you away and trying to get in and out. Um, it was awesome though. So I, I get right up there, uh, I hold up the ring, like they're all looking at it, they think it's awesome. I hand it to Elijah, uh, he takes it and he's like, this is awesome, and he goes to hand it back. And I'm like, no, 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 like I made it for you guys. And I hand it to him and Sean, they take it, and the thing slips out of their hand hits the floor and falls into the four pieces, like shoots across the concrete. They're all scrambling to pick it up. Um, they're like freaking out. And I'm trying to like assure them, I'm like, it's okay, it's okay. It goes back with magnets. And they snap it back together into like two pieces, just as like the camera person's like, you gotta take a picture and get out of here. So I mean, they, they pretend to be like surprised, which I mean, it was literally like three seconds after they thought they had broke it. So despite being actors, um, I think some of the expressions on their faces were probably still fairly legitimate. So, you know, I saw what they were doing, read the room and just sort of played with it. So why don't we take a look at that picture? So yeah, uh, that picture was totally worth it. Um, it was fantastic. The look on their faces just really kind of solidified the whole thing. I had a great time. Um, I hope that the next time I come up with some silly plan like that, I give myself a little bit more time to work on it. But overall, I think it all worked out pretty good. So uh, thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed uh, the kind of brief video. Um, normally when I do build videos, I go into a little bit more detail. Um, but I didn't want to make this such a long video or break it into parts. Um, it was just supposed to be fun. Um, 
not super educational. If you got something out of it, then awesome. That's even better. Uh, but thanks for coming along on my journey with me. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. All right, thanks. Bye.